In this video, we'll explore math in the 18th century. Uh, one of the most famous families of that time is the Bernoulli family, especially Jacob and Johann. Uh, they became very close with Leibniz, which then meant much of their work was spent on calculus. Uh, Jacob had many contributions within calculus, as well as in probability, where in probability we now have the Bernoulli theorem, the distribution, and the equation. Uh, Johann worked specifically with L'Hopital to create the first calculus book, and Johann's actually the one that found what we call L'Hopital's rule, but because it was published in this text that was credited to L'Hopital, it's why we call it L'Hopital's rule. Uh, just as a reminder, L'Hopital's rule says that if we have two functions that, as they approach the same limit, go to zero, then the way that we would actually find the limit of, if we tried to divide them together, would be to look at their first derivative, and the, and the fraction of the first derivative will give us the limit. And this is going to be true if our limits are plus or minus infinity as well. Now the family itself continued for four generations of mathematicians, so their works continue to have significant, significant impact with our modern mathematics, even beyond just Jacob and Johann. So let's look at L'Hopital's rule. If we looked at just the natural log of 2x over 4x squared minus 1 as the limit approaches a half, what we'd end up having is that this limit would be 0 over 0, which we cannot do. But if we looked at the first derivative of each of these functions, the first derivative of the natural log of 2x would be 1 over x. The first derivative of 4x squared minus 1 is 8x. Now let's look at 1 over x divided by 8x approaching 1 half. And when we do this, that simplifies to 1 half. So that means that our original limit is actually equal to 1 half. So two other famous mathematicians at the time were de Moivre, who looked at um, the integration of e raised to the x, negative x squared being equal to the square root of pi over 2 when you're integrating from 0 to infinity, as well as looking at the concepts of what happens when we start integrating complex numbers into trigonometry. Taylor created the expansion series, which was used by both Euler and uh, Lagrange later in the mathematics that they completed. Now, Euler was one of the most famous mathematicians that really touched on a lot of different branches of math, and his contributions are seen in many different areas. Uh, his father studied under Jacob Bernoulli, which then allowed him to study under Johann Bernoulli. Uh, the Bernoulli family then helped him get a job at St. Petersburg, where he uh, worked for 14 years. Then he went to the Prussian Academy for 25 years before returning to St. Petersburg for another 17 years. Uh, even in his later years, he was able to do a lot of work uh, through a secretary dictating for him when he lost his sight. He never actually held a teaching position. He was always considered a mathematics researcher, a position that does not necessarily exist in many universities anymore. And his works spanned over 530 published works, making him one of the most prolific writers of his time. And again, his work captured all sorts of mathematics. He was not limited to just one specific area. Some of his uh, more famous contributions include some different notations, such as f of x for functions, e for the base of natural logs, uh, labeling the sides of a triangle, the summation symbol, uh, i for our imaginary unit, and the idea of e raised to the ix equals the cosine of x plus i sine of x, or that e to the i pi plus 1 equals 0. Uh, within geometry, he created Euler's formula uh, for polyhedra, as well as the uh, Euler's line in a triangle. Now, in graph theory, he had this concept that came from this problem called the Bridges of Conisberg, where Conisberg is a real place and has this real situation where there are seven bridges that connect two sides of a river with two islands in between. And his question was, can I go across so that I never cross a bridge more than one time? And this actually leads to the concepts of graph theory. Uh, when we look at it, each side of the river and the islands become nodes, and the bridges themselves represent our methods of branches. And so when we talk about a node, we're looking at the order of that node, 
and telling us the number of branches that are coming off that specific note. So for example, if we look at C, C, the order of C would be three because it has three branches coming off of it. When we talk about a route then, we're talking about what is the overall path that would allow us to travel the entire image in this case. And if it's unicursal, that means we would only cross a bridge one time or go across a path one time, one branch. Where if it's multicursal, there's going to be at least one branch that I have to cross more than one time. So in this case, the Bridges of Conisberg is actually a multicursal because you can't travel it without hitting it uh, one bridge at least twice. Now why is that? And this is where the work of Euler came very important. Uh, what he noticed is that in every time you do graph theory, the number of odd nodes is always even. So we would say that C was an odd node because there were three branches. And so that means there's got to be multiple odd nodes that are of an even number then. So two odd, zero, zero odd nodes, two odd nodes, four odd nodes, etc. If a graph has all even nodes, then it's automatically universal and it will end exactly where it began. If it has exactly two odd nodes, then it is possible to have a universal path that begins at one and will end at the other. But if a graph has more than two odd nodes, it's always multicursal. So if we look at bridges of Conisberg, what we notice is that A has five branches, one, two, three, four, five. B has three branches, C has three branches, and D has three branches. So in this case, all four nodes are odd. And since that's more than two nodes being odd, it has to be multicursal. Now the last major mathematician we'll talk about is Lagrange, and Lagrange took over Euler's position in Berlin. Uh, he focused on really trying to improve the, the rigor of calculus, uh, and is considered our first true analyst. He created the notation we use for uh, the derivatives with, with the f prime and f double prime and f triple prime. Uh, he did a lot of work in differential and partial differential equations. Uh, in number theory, he provided the first proof that every positive integer can be expressed by the sum of not more than four squares. And he also created what we call Lagrange's theorem in group theory, that the order of a subgroup of a finite group G is the factor of the order of G.